Shalom Lei from Rabbi Yisai. This is Yehuda Levin. The program is 11 at 11. Heard each and every Thursday night on WSNR 620 AM radio in New York and parts of New Jersey. And you can now find it, uh, this program each and every week on the internet on um, Rabbi Levin Radio. You go to the internet, YouTube, or whatever, Rabbi Levin Radio, and you'll be able to hear and see the program. Well, Rabbi said we have a very interesting program this week. We're going to talk about a new perspective on what is going on between NYU and the Satmar B'Kachoylem. We're going to have our concluding segment in analyzing what David Lichtenstein has been doing, especially in my debate with him. And I'll explain once again why that's so important. And in addition, we're going to give you news from the culture front of all kinds of happenstances, all kinds of things that are happening as we are cascading down towards Sodom and Gomorrah and how this impacts on the Jewish community with various pieces of legislation, as well as a, uh, we will conclude with fascinating uh, the connects Shavuos and Hanukkah, it speaks about the power of Jewish women in uh, intrinsic Torah life in terms of being facilitators of all the Ruchnias and the Torah that Klai Yisrael has. So uh, fasten your seatbelts and let's begin with Satna Bika Chaylo. This is not my issue, frankly. Uh, a person cannot be all over the place. Uh, and, and therefore, there are many people who are weighing in uh, on the controversy of why NYU has been trying to expel Satma Bika Cholim from the wonderful and important work that they're doing in the hospital. And it seems now maybe there's been some sort of a compromise or something's back in or whatever it is. I'm not even up on the latest. However, I think that I have a very important perspective here, which somebody shared with me, a very, uh, a very bright uh, rabbi shared with me last night, and I'd like to convey it to the audience because I think of its vital importance. What might be behind this whole situation where, where Satma Bika Cholim was, was being limited or was being cast out of NYU is probably because of the vogue now that we've been discussing for this past half a year, which is that the medical medical facilities, the insurance companies, and the so-called progressives politically are all agitating for euthanasia, assisted suicide, do not resuscitate. After all, people are old, like Governor Lamb of Colorado said many years ago, if they're old, let them uh, wither away like leaves on the tree and know when it's time to check out of the hotel. And that's the attitude. The last year of life uh, costs a phenomenal amount of money for the insurance companies, hospitals, it takes up beds, etc., etc. This view that cheapens and deprecates God's most valuable gift to us life is directly antithetical to our Torah values, which hold that every single moment of life is a spiritual greatness and is um, it's unbelievable what's accomplished, even if a person is chas v'shalom, comatose, or this or that. You know, I, parenthetically, I want to take a little detour. Uh, there was an episode that I read about in a, 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 a Torah newsletter out of Eretz Yisrael some years ago, and the episode was there was an irreligious doctor in an Israeli hospital that saw a patient that was hopeless and uh, was out of it. And so he surreptitiously did things to hasten the person's death, thinking in effect he was doing a mercy killing. The person's gone anyhow, there's no quality of life, etc., etc. So he pulled a plug or he pressed the wire. He did something that hastened the person's demise. An irreligious doctor. A few days later, the doctor had a tremendous, tremendously frightening dream that changed his life. The nifter came back to him in a dream and said, why did you interfere with my end of life? You thought you were doing a favor by hastening and you should know something. I had X amount of time more that I had to live, that I had to suffer, that I had to be in this world. And then afterward, I would have achieved my tikkun, my rectification, what I needed. And you interfered, and because of that, you've caused me problems. Well, I don't remember exactly if the doctor had his dream once or twice or whatever it is, but the bottom line is, according to this particular story, 
what happened is the doctor um, became a Baal Tshuva because this was so frightening to him and it was so vivid and it was so real and in this particular case maybe he was Mazaka the Nifta by becoming a Baal Tshuva but the concept, the idea that I want to express here is that basically each and every minute of life is super vital, is precious and we don't know Hashem's Cheshboinus and uh, we're not supposed to be doicha the kates, etc., etc., unless it's in a halachic situation where we're advised that we're allowed to do that. But what's happening here in NYU as a cutting edge hospital is basically they're on board with the mentality, the liberal progressive DNR mentality, etc. And I, I just heard a little earlier today of a situation that a woman went to a hospital and uh, around Pesach time. And she was told, or her family was told, she has an hour or hours to live. And a few weeks later, she's at a vart celebrating, etc., etc. I mean, this is a Himmel Gishrei. How could such a thing happen? And the answer is that we don't want religious Jews in the personification, in this particular case, of Satma Bikachalim around, because when they see things that are happening to patients, or that patients, many patients and their families, are not very strong, skilled, combative advocates and therefore they allow themselves to a certain extent to be persuaded or bullied etc etc. What we're talking about here is mamish nefoshes and it's happening right here, it's not happening in Dubuque, it's not happening in Saskatchewan, it's not happening in Ba'ari Asada, it's happening in the epicenter of Tori Yiddishkeit right outside of Yushalayim, the biggest center and, and obviously, obviously this has to do with the cause and effect, meaning this is a constant theme of this program, a constant hashkafa. HaKadosh Baruch Hu deals me the connected media. You show that you don't care about attacks on Kedushas Yesoid, on morality having to do with Bruce Miller. So I make that Mayor Bloomberg says, Mitzisa Bep has a problem. You don't care enough about Devarim Shepard Kedusha. So I make that we have a tremendous amount, as they call it in Williamsburg, of malastrations. It's very simple. Just trace it back. If there's an attack on a certain institution, you understand why. If NYU is able to throw out the right wing or attempt to throw out the right wing Satmar Bikachalim who are doing compassionate chesed, sustaining and nurturing life and promoting the, the biggest Torah values of chesed, Bikachalim, etc. Why are they able to do this? Because we and they, Satmar, listen carefully, Satmar is turning the other cheek when it comes to assisted suicide, etc. So you say, what do you mean, Chas what are you talking about? So the answer is like this, go check the anti-life euthanasia pro uh, 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 assisted suicide legislation and you'll see that the liberal garbage that represents the orthodox from communities of Williamsburg or Monroe or, or Muncie or Square or, or, or Borough Park or Flatbush, you'll see that a lot of these lowlifes are voting in an antithetical way and they're still getting support and the Satma automatons or the Hasidic robots are told by their quote-unquote Askodim who to vote for. So then all of a sudden, wait a second, now it's not just a general law which we don't pay any attention to, but now we see it in the hospital, we're getting kicked out, now we're all upset. But why are you getting kicked out of the hospital? You're getting kicked out of the hospital because of the family values and the right to life and the right to life that you stand for. But you're a steerer, Sakma, you're a steerer. And you're a steerer when you get all upset and you have meetings about Mitsitsu, but pay, but at the same time you continue to pay off the politicians, so to speak, with votes who are voting for gay marriage and everything, abortion on demand and everything that's antithetical to Yiddishkeit. I'll give you an example. Right now, this next Tuesday or next Thursday, Governor Cuomo's outrageous pro-abortion bill that totally decriminalizes abortion at any stage in the pregnancy and withholding food or sustenance or nurturing or medical help if a baby survives a botched abortion. This Ritzicha bill, you will see that there will be many legislators in the, in the, in the New York State uh, Legislature representing Orthodox Jews will satma, will dover nidarman 
or, 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 or Mr. Kastenbaum or anybody else pick up the phone and demand of Joseph Lentall or, or whoever the, uh, the state senator is now, it slips my name, I'm having a senior moment, will they demand that these people to vote the right way? I doubt it very, very much. Then you wonder why Satan is getting kicked out of Bikar Chaylam. Think about it, Rabbi Zay. It's food for thought. Let me, let me move on. Um, let me give you a, a piece of news here. Rabbi Zay, you have to understand that this is applicable to us. Here's this. In LifeSite News, on February the 19th, 2018, on we report that a dementia patient was euthanized without his consent. In Belgium, after a person with dementia was killed by euthanasia, even though the person did not request death by lethal injection and was incapable of consenting. Okay? So what you have is, they demonstrated the patient's lack of competence. They played a video showing the doctor characterized as a deeply demented patient. The patient whose identity was not disclosed was euthanized at the family's request. There was no record of any prior request for euthanasia from the patient. In other words, Rabbi Said, this is literally, we are now reaching the next or final frontier. There's going to be increasing, ever increasing wholesale murder of, of people. By the way, this has been occurring for decades in hospitals throughout the country and throughout the world. That surreptitiously, by benign neglect, turn the other way, we're not rushing to this patient, they're older, they're this, etc. We don't know how many thousands or tens of thousands or maybe more people die for no good reason in hospitals each and every year. But now, they're coming out of the closet and it's going to become much stronger, much more pronounced because what we're doing is we're legitimating, we're legalizing this murder, this ritzicha by calling it uh, euthanasia, right to die, die with dignity and all this kind of stuff. So that's what's happening. It's coming soon to a local theater next to you, Chas Shalom. You have to understand everything is networked and interconnected. If we continue to think that we could be Seymich, our Askanim, our activists. What do you mean, these selfless individuals? Let's take it back to NYU. Let's explain about the Askanim. There's no question that the five or so Askanim that deal with NYU, all of whom are Hatzalah members, lifesavers, there's no question that they're Erlich of fine people, they want to help, they have thousands of mitzvahs and mice and to their credits of selflessly helping and devoting. But there's also no question, like the Chavetz Chaim says, Lashon Hara Tormen Nisharen, Abra Nar Daphne Zayin. We can't be stupid. We have to ask ourselves: These liaisons for NYU, do they get paid, and who pays them? Is it a formal organization that pays them, and they're independent, or are they paid by the taskmasters in NYU? And if they are on the uh, the salary rolls of NYU. Can they be totally objective and still totally represent what's good and what's Ehrlich and what's right for the firm community? The answer is, it's an admixture. We're not saying these people are evil. We're not saying even that they realize exactly what they're doing and that they're consciously complicit in promoting the aims of what is behind the Satmar expulsion, which is ultimately do not resuscitate, let's get rid of these old sick people. We're not saying that consciously these liaisons are doing this, but they're turning the other way. Their, their brains are not working at the full, at full extent because the Chazal tell us that even the Moshe and Aaron are susceptible to Shoicha, ki yishoicha yavar eneh hachon v'yisalik etc., etc. This is what's happening. So we have to understand this. This is a constant theme. The people who represent the Flatbush uh, Jewish Coalition, Moody Melman's group, or the, the Ezra Friedlanders, or the Yeruchim Silvers, or the Chatzkel Bennett's, or the, Le the, the, the Shmuel Lefkowitz's, or the countless, countless others whose names I've mentioned here uh, at, at different programs. They're not bad people, they're great people, they're fine people, they're selfless people, they're devoted people. They also get parnasa 
or if it's not Parnasa, it's covered, it's access, it's power, which is an aphrodisiac, just like money is. Okay? And, and this colors the way they think about things. So this is a problem across the board, Rabbi, so we have to understand this. And as the, the late quasi-great Bob Grant used to say, somebody needs to say this, nobody's saying this, to all your humble servant, Yehud Levin, I'm happy to say it. Please, I ask you once again, to spread the word about this radio program. This is how you can become a partner of what we're doing. And not only spread the word about the radio program, but it's now on video where you could where you could hear it and see it each and every week and it's archived. If you go to Rabbi Levin Radio, you can find it. And I'm making efforts now to, to have this uh, put on to certain websites, particularly in Lakewood. We're interested in the Lakewood B'nai Torah, knowing about what's, what's going on. Uh, I just also want to mention, as I do every couple of weeks, that we have 81 archive shiurim of my Chidush Torah, my Divrei Torah, throughout the calendar year. And uh, I, I started this two years ago. I haven't put up anything for a year. But in the one year, I put up 80 or 81 shiurim on uh, uh, Kol HaLashon. And you can find it there by dialing, uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's 718-906-6400. I think that's the uh, that's the number, and you go one for English, three for my category, and I think that my uh, my particular uh, channel is is is, is thirty three, I think, and and you can hear those uh, shirim avail yourself to those shirim. Wherever a voice I, um, we told you about the dementia patient. Now, now I want to tell you another fascinating thing. Catholic World Report. In February 16, February 16, 2018, Lemus they speak about transgenderism, semantic contagion of biological fact. Now, let me explain to you what that means, because this is extremely important. While there's been a dearth of reliable data on the surge in numbers of transgender children and adults in the United States, Data from Sweden, Australia, and the United Kingdom indicates an explosion in demand for gender identity treatment. According to The Guardian, the UK's 14 gender identity clinics have seen referral increases of up to 100% in the past year. At London's Charing Cross, the oldest and largest adult clinic, the number of referrals has more than tripled in 10 years from 498 in 2006 to 1892 in 2016. Uh, let me explain to you what, what, what they're saying here, what the statistics are showing. The more they mainstream this weirdness of encouraging people that it's totally normal to think that HaKadosh Baruch Hu made a mistake and that he put a woman in a man's body or a man's in a woman's body and we have to cut off our genitalia which is a lav daraisa and we have to be misares ourselves or whatever, or whatever is involved. The more that society is leaning over backwards to do this, the more there's an increase of people of all ages, not only adults but even children, hey, come to think of it, I am, come to think of it, I am, a woman in a man's body. I am a man in a woman's body. I don't feel good. I have an identity problem. In other words, we see that this is literally increasing and increasing. In other words, the more you put out this perversion and the more you mainstream perversion, the more people become susceptible to becoming perverted and, and deviant. So when people say stupidities in the front community like, Nivus what does it have to do with us? The fact is that all of the Chazarai has to do with us, with the increase and the explosion of uh, the fluidity of experimenting and, and uh, participating in some form or another in homosexual activity, there's absolutely no question that there's an increase in what we'll call bisexuality in people who can swing, quote-unquote, either way. And this is basically a Ramban towards the end of the Torah. This is a Ramban towards the end of the Torah, meaning that um, the Ramban says 
that homosexuality is associated with when society or individuals become jaded with what they're doing of a heterosexual nature, they then go more and more mishuga, and this is mishkav zacha. If the Ramban says this yesoid, this yesoid has a practical, a practical application throughout history, and now society as a whole is becoming much more perverse, and we're not only seeing society become perverse in in uh, gender bending in, in in terms of homosexuality and bisexuality. But the next great frontier now is transgenderism. And you already have these Chajvei Torah type, ultra-modern, orthodox, so-called synagogues where they have people who are specifically transgendered and you find idiots, idiotin, stupids. I think there was even a program uh, where a stupid from OU discussed, I think so, discussed halachically which, which section, which section on which side of the mechitza does a transgender sit? You understand? We give this credence by discussing this abnormality, this perversion, this deviance, this super hate, and we give it credibility by discussing this. And if we don't do it, then Chaim Rappaport or others will tell us how we're not Mechayim Rappaport Kamaycha. So instead, let's discuss it. Let's have a, a halachic conferences about how to treat the transgendered and whether they're allowed to sit in shul and whether they can get an aliyah and what are they considered now and all of this chazerai. Those who seek to destroy you ultimately will not be outside forces, but they will be from Trojan horses and fifth columns within our own community, the do-gooders. And that's what we're experiencing. Hello? Make no mistake about it. Make, make no mistake about it. Just, um, bottom line, bottom line is, uh, to the next, to the next situation. Earlier in January of this year, I did something that I haven't done very often. I went to, um, I went to Washington, D.C., to arrive outside the Supreme Court of the United States, I went with two or three Yidden, and there were hundreds of non-Jews, and they went there because the Supreme Court of the United States was hearing a case that started, I think, in Oregon or in Washington, where a Christian baker refused to bake a, a, a wedding cake for a homosexual couple. Now, meaning he had a bakery, and he had regular cakes there, wedding cakes that you could buy that are uh, regular that they are free to come in and buy. But they wanted to commission him and his artistry in creating a unique cake to celebrate their homosexual union. He said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. It's against my religion. Go to a baker down the block or across the street. But you can't ask me to do something celebratory or using my artistic expression, my freedom of speech, when I have freedom of religion. And I feel that, that, it, that it is a grave disservice. It is a transgression to have a same-gender marriage. Because of this, he was ultimately fined around $130,000. Now, they have this thing on, on, on the internet, or fund me, or whatever it is, and within a short amount of time, the $130,000 was raised by sympathetic religious Christians throughout the country or throughout the world who wanted to contribute to paying his fine and to his legal fees. But of course, the homosexualists, that is people who might be heterosexual, but they support the homosexual agenda, the, 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 the liberal progressive quote-unquote do-gooders said that this is biased and racist, and therefore they managed to stop this GoFundMe or whatever it is from delivering the $130,000 to this uh, baker, this Christian baker. And so ultimately the case was heard by the Supreme Court in January, and of course you had the homosexual militants there screaming and yelling, and on the other side you had devout religious Christians, and happily I, I slept overnight there and, and stood outside in Washington in January with a few other Yidden, and we were interviewed by World Net Daily, which means that tens of thousands or more Jew, uh, people rather saw that Jewish people from a Orthodox Jews are concerned with what's happening. We understand that it's not just the Christian baker who's being threatened, but ultimately it's our psychologists, our accountants, our lawyers, our doctors, uh, our, our land of 
uh, landlords who are going to have to rent to these kinds of people, etc., etc., when they have a multiple family dwelling that could be even a two or three family house. So really it has to do with us. So even if for altruistic reasons, which really should be enough, because we're supposed to be our la'amen, we're supposed to be a light unto the nations, and it's really an embarrassing nechil Hashem, where Christians say, I don't understand, we're the biblical Jews. But leaving that aside, if we can't do it for altruistic reasons, we should do it for practical reasons, because Rabbi Yisai, this nightmare on Elm Street is coming to a theater near to you, in your house, in your neighborhood. All of this nightmarish garbage affects us, whether it's Mitzitzah B'peh, whether it's molestations, whether it's do not resuscitate, whether it's transgenderism and lockers and bathrooms, etc. It's all coming to you. And as I read to you from Devoto Weixman, a Waxman, a few, a few weeks ago in London, in England, they are actively pushing this stuff into Haredi schools. So wake up and smell the coffee, Rabbi Sai. Miller was talking about 30 or 40 years ago. So now let me give you a piece of good news here. And the good news is that Aaron Cohen, listen to her name, Aaron Cohen, I wonder, uh, Aaron Colin, C-O-L-E-N, of The Blaze, on February the 6th, 2018 reports, a ruling in favor, could you believe it, in favor of a California baker who refused to design a wedding cake for a gay couple produced a potentially significant distinction that could impact future similar cases. This judge, David Lanthe, ruled that the state could not force Kathy Miller, owner of Tastry's Bakery, to bake a cake that would go against her beliefs, according to news sources. Quote, for this court to force such compliance would do violence to the essentials of free speech guaranteed under the First Amendment, the judge said. A key factor in the decision was that the cake being requested by the couple was a custom job that was not regularly sold by the bakery. The implication is that if the couple had requested a cake that was on display and routinely sold to other customers, it would be discriminatory to refuse to sell it to a gay couple on the basis of religious belief. Okay, so that's basically what I was outlining to you. So this is almost the exact same thing that the Supreme Court is hearing. We're going to see now any day in June the Supreme Court's going to come up with a ruling and the Chas was shown because of that Russia that maneuver, Justice Kennedy, the swing vote, who, who basically was the full, could you imagine what this person is going to go through at the end of his life, in the next world? Justice Kennedy, one single egocentric Russia Marussia is responsible for the fact that millions, tens of millions or billions of people across the world are now faced with the, the prospect of having to accept as a fact in their localities homosexual marriage as a state of being. Meaning as follows, as the United, as the United States goes, goes, so goes the world in many cases. Everybody apes the United States. And therefore, uh, Justice Kennedy, by a single swing vote, he was the one who pushed homosexual marriage that it became recognized throughout the 50 states. And because of that, many other countries and many locations throughout the world have embraced this perversion. This is all because of Judge Kennedy. Do you imagine what's waiting for this Russia Marussia in the next world? This ostensibly conservative person? Now, he might not be finished doing his damage. We know that there are four libs that will do anything ultra-liberal, and they will probably throw the book at this uh, Christian baker who went with, excuse the term, but he went with Messiris Nefesh, that I don't know if we can ask how many of us would have been faced with a $130,000 fine and everything else, and we would have stuck to our guns and not said, Chaptus to good job, we're going to give the cake to the homosexual couple. Vuzken metin mizenin gulas. We can't do anything about it. We can't do anything about it. We're in goal this year, but when it comes to asking government programs, then we know how to go to Washington, and we know how to do everything, and goal is no longer applies when it comes to counting the politicians and everything else, and making the big conventions and everything else. Then we're not in goal. But when it comes to the serious nefesh, for morality, for decency, then we are in goal. We can't have it both ways, our place say. It reminds us of the famous base Halevi. The most famous base Halevi that even an Amoris like me knows. The Beis HaLevi basically says, remember, Omer of Abba Kleim Barbless, the Gemara, Oy Lonu Miyayim Hadin, Oy Lonu Miyayim Techocha, Woe to us, or we're going to stand in front of God, and we're going to be chastised, we're going to be shown to be hypocrites. 
because the, 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 the shift they call realized, we weren't concerned, now we're concerned. When we come down to Yosef, we're facing, but we weren't concerned with the pain of our father. We weren't concerned with Yaakov Avinu's pain. We weren't concerned with what we were doing to Yosef. In other words, the, the Shvatim saw, the shift they caused, saw a double standard, a hypocrisy. They, they, they saw it in three dimensions. And this is unfortunately what each and every one of us is going to be facing in Yenna so I'm using Justice Kennedy as a jump off point to say, we, we are going to have this problem, Rabbi Sai. Let's move on with the news. Listen to this. A Catholic bishop bars the second most powerful United States senator in the minority. That means Chuck Schumer, the, the Russian Marusha, the egocentric, power-hungry maneuver that got his power base first as an assemblyman in densely populated Flatbush, then he became a United States senator, and now he elbowed his way to the top. And, uh, and he is now the minority leader of the United States Senate, and he's making tremendous Chilol Hashem, tremendous Chilol Hashem, so, so many things. So many people see him as this snarky, smirky, uh, 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 smart-alecky Jew from Jew York, and with all his liberal garbage, and is attacking Trump. But I want to give you a little piece of history. The guy who was the number two man who was slated to become the leader after the retirement was it Jim Wright, I forget who, who, who it was who retired, not Wright, maybe it was the one after him, I forget who it was, but the, the one who was slated was Dick Durbin. And Dick Durbin was elbowed out by Chucky Schumer. So Dick Durbin is a Catholic, and according to strict Catholic teaching, they get, they get a certain thing in their religious ritual called communion on Sundays when they go to church. And communion, or whatever this is, was not supposed to be given to somebody who does certain cardinal, excuse the pun, cardinal transgressions or avayers. But mostly Catholic priests, like everybody else, are concerned about the power structure and the politicians. That's why Ted Kennedy we supported abortion of the Veda, the Mishka Vzach, and everything else. He, he had a wonderful Catholic funeral, and the, the Cardinal of Boston presided, and the devout religious Catholics were furious. How do you give such a person who is anathema, antithetical to everything Catholic, how do you give him this covenant? But this is the way things work, unfortunately. But here, when you see a, uh, a Catholic priest who goes against, against the stream, he swims upstream. He stands up for his faith and his religious values. It's worth, it's worth spending a moment to hear about this. Bishop Thomas John Paparaki of the Diocese of Springfield, Illinois, has barred Senator Dick Durbin from receiving Holy Communion for his recent vote against a bill that would have banned late-term abortions. The cleric who heads the Roman Catholic community in Springfield area made his decision last week to ban the senator from receiving the sacrament after the Senate failed to pass the Pain Capable Unborn Childs Act last month. The act, which failed to win the 60 votes needed to advance the bill in the Senate, would have prohibited abortion procedures after, after 20 weeks after conception. Okay, you understand what I'm saying here on both sides? Rabbi Sai, I, I once got a tshuva from uh, written a whole page from the Shionim Shion Balocha. When I came to him in 1985 when I was running for mayor against Koch, and he wrote a whole letter and he says, I never get involved in politics, but I was asked to respond and I believe I have to respond to Allah of my seat. It's a whole page in handwriting, and he writes, the Chil Hashem, the Chil Hashem is judged by the Gentiles. The Ika and Halacha, the Ika Chil Hashem is Lomri Yom Ruhagoyim, what the Gentiles are going to say. Which means as follows, if you see that the Gentiles are makbid in something, they adhere to something, and Lahavdil Chas V'Sholem, we in the Orthodox Torah community, dare we do any less? That constitutes a grave Chil Hashem. And really, to augment this, I use the Toysvus and Sanhedrin. The Toysvus and Sanhedrin famously says, 
how do we know that abortion is prohibited for a Jew? There is no place in the Torah. Abortion is a subset of Sheva Mrs. B'nai as it says in Bereshish, Dam Odom Ba'odam Dam Yeshafech. And the Gemara in Sanhedrin says, what does it mean? Why does it say Shafech Dam Odom? It should say Dama Yeshafech. Why does it have an extra Ba'odam? He spills the blood of man with a man. It could be by a man. It's a very uh, convoluted construct. If a blood of a man is spilled by a man, his blood shall be shed. It doesn't have to say. If his blood is spilled, and we're talking about somebody murdering somebody, obviously the murderer's blood will be shed, capital punishment. Why does it say, Shoifich tam odam be'odam? So the Gemara Sanhedrin says, what is an odam be'odam? A man by a man is also a man within a man, be'odam. A man within a man is a fetus. Thus, the Gemara in Sanhedrin, Rabbi Yishmol derives, and the Rambam passes the halacha, that for a Noachai, for a Ben Noach, abortion is a capital offense explicated by the Torah in Genesis 9-6. Gracious. So Taisus comes along and says, is there anything that is also for a Gentile that is permitted for a Jew? Now this is a question that Mepharshim asks because there are certain cases where there's a stricter law for Gentiles and Jews. We're not going to get into it. We're not going to get far afield. The point is the Kalmachimer of Taisvis, the question of Taisvis, the point is a general philosophic point that we are the Marines, we are the Green Berets of humanity. We're held to a higher standard. And therefore, if you see, Lahavtel, that there are still Gentile clergymen who are standing up to their face, who are uh, saying no to power. Dick Derman is one of the most powerful politicians in the United States. He's the number two man in the United States minority Senate. Tremendous power. And he, he lives in the district of this bishop. And this bishop has to see him. You can understand Durbin didn't take lightly. He's not happy when he has the busha, the cherpa, the bazillion. You understand? And Dick Durbin does it. Can we do other, Can we do less? What do we have to do? What are, what are our activists, our Askonim, our Agudis Yisrael, our OU, our Lubavitch, our Satma? Dare we do less? Let's see, Rabbi Sai, is there anything else that we want to give you today? Just want to read. I'm holding up the Jewish Press here. Every week the Jewish Press has, and this is the Friday, June 1st issue, on page 13. I want to find myself doing an advertisement for the Jewish Press. They deserve that you should buy and subscribe to their paper. Why? Do we agree with everything they say? No. Do they have certain hashkafas, perhaps, that go against our grain as right-wing Haredis? Probably they do. However, this is of tremendous redeeming social value. Each and every week for the past two months, they've had um, an article called Dispatch from the Culture War Front up in Jürgen Feinberg. And here they give uh, information about what is going on. This, this is ancillary. This is in writing every week what I try to do on my radio program, audio and visually. This is what they, they're doing, and therefore it's important that we become educated voters, okay? So, first of all, we should know, again, that the DNRs do not resuscitate bill, allowing nurse practitioners to issue potentially deadly DNRs, went into effect in New York State. So you have to be very, very careful when you have somebody in the hospital. Transgender Toyeva in New Jersey, three bills passed this past Thursday. They are having previously passed the Senate. One of them allows transgenders to alter their birth certificates to match their contrived gender. Voting in favor of all three of these bills were yarmulke bearing, yarmulke wearing Gary Sher. Gary Sher, who ostensibly is an Orthodox Jew from Lakewood, voted for all the three transgender schmutz. Uh, a non Jew, Clinton Calabresi, representing Passaic, Valerie, uh, uh, Gary Sher representing Passaic, Valerie Hopple and Gordon Johnson of Teaneck and Englewood. Nancy Pinkin and Robert Kabanachak, both of Edison Highland Park, and the list goes on from Elizabeth from Cherry Hill. 
from Fairlawn, from Bergenfield, and two Republicans, Sean Keane and Edward Thompson, who represent the largest yeshiva community in the nation of Lakewood. Despite Lakewood's opposition, these two legislators voted in favor of the Transgender Birth Certificate and the Transgender Task Force, only abstaining on the transgender death certificate bill. Realizing that abstaining is far worse than simply not voting, abstaining indicates that the legislator was present and actively took a neutral position. Active neutrality in the war between good and evil is itself evil. And um, again, I want to tell you that the New York State's Hennet, uh, State Senate Health Committee is set to vote on Cuomo's super abortion bill this Thursday. And uh, Todd Kaminsky is representing uh, Lawrence, he's representing Far Rockaway, and he should be getting phone calls, um, and he should be told about his vote. It's going to be another Chil Hashem. Moreover, a voice I. We were going to do. In the remaining moments, I wanted to do a Dvar Torah, but I don't know if we're going to have a chance. I want to conclude with the, the, the David Lichtenstein situation. I would just want to explain why do I keep. Why am I doing this for a third and final week? I'm doing this for a third and final week because, as bad as it is when politicians do things the wrong way. People say it's politicians, so it doesn't impact the community because we know that politicians are low lives. When Askanim, it's closer to home, when Askanim do the wrong thing, so people say, no, no, it's Askanim, they have to do it for the general benefit of the community. But when a person who is ostensibly a Ben a Talmud Chacham, and a Gevir Adder, and a philanthropist, and he has a weekly radio program, Headlines, in which he has leading Rabbanim on, and he deals with a whole panoply, a whole gamut, a whole smorgasbord of all kinds of issues having to do with the Jewish community, with from community, with halacha. So people tend to really respect. And when when he is pouring cold water and signaling all of the liberal claptrap vis-a-vis an attitude towards uh, uh, from people who are homosexuals, now we're not saying, again, we have Rahmanas on people who are homosexuals, we have Rahmanas on people who desire young children under age, we have, des- we have Rahmanas on people who want to commit adultery, we have Rahmanas on people who are porn addicts, and it's a, it's a sad commentary that we have to see advertisements on the internet and in the newspapers, if you're a victim of schmutz, we can help you, and we have to thank those institutions that are doing this, we have to understand the pragmatic reality. But at the same time, when you have somebody here, like Lichtenstein, who's being snarky and smug and slicing and dicing and editing and promoting his own view and trying desperately to squeeze his guests on a number of other issues into saying his Valkenschung, his worldview, which is, is, is sometimes ultra-liberal, this has to be called for what it is because this is a danger. This causes an Amalek-like careerus, a cult type. This is late sunnis. Late sunnis means when you smirk and you make snarky comments and exaggerated claims, and therefore you have a bunch of people shaking their heads. Uh, one of the videos, my first video dealing with Lichtenstein, appeared on this site called Heftevelt, and there's a guy who aptly calls himself Tippish. This is what he calls himself. His name is Tippish, and he's, I mean, the guy looked in the mirror, and, and, uh, and he, he realized exactly what he is. So Tippish writes, Oh, this guy Levin, da 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 da. Where's Rav Shach? Where's Rav Moshe? So parenthetically, I'll tell you where Rav Shach and Rav Moshe is. I got the letter from Rav Moshe Feinstein on a goodness of one of stationery saying that you have to fight gay rights and you have to go down to City Hall and fight it, Mr. Tippish. And I was the cause of Rav Lazar Shach telling Neuf Deer that you have to fight this, and it's in Haggadah Rav Shach without mentioning Neuf Deer's name, just saying Askin Terat. So to answer your question, Tippish. The fact is that Reb Moshe, Reb Shach, Reb Moshe Halvestam, Reb Avig de Miller, the Deputy Merov, the Shomer Tzinah Mahalacha, Reb the late Rabbi Tights, Reb Shmuel Feivelson, Reb Leitner, Reb Leitner from from Weensburg, the Kasher Verov. I've had Reb what's his name in Reb Moshe Eliyahu, 
Rav Avadi Yosef, I've interchanged, I've dealt with all of these Gedolei Yisrael, and they all are involved. And I'm sorry that you don't know this, but let's try to finish up with David Lichtenstein. went through some of this in the previous weeks, and I want to get to the conclusion of this, uh, this segment. I don't understand the ramifications, but I wrote this and put it in. I said, listen here. Basically, what I suggested was what the Mishka Vezocha called chemical castration, which means that if a person is a molester and he's in prison, so what they do is when he gets out, they give him certain chemicals that uh, reduces libido and make him incapable of committing any further molestations. I'm saying if a person is faced with a taiva, whether it's adultery or underage children or mishkav zocher, or whatever the schmutz is, and you can take a chemical as a last resort rather than to do the averus, so why is David Lichtenstein laughing at this? Why is he mocking this? Why is he questioning this? David, what's the alternative? You're trying to find excuses for people to be Isaac and Arias? Doesn't the Chazal say, Isn't that a cornerstone of our faith? HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not give us a challenge we can't overcome. It's tremendously hard. And I can't get into the reasons why some people have cancer, why some people have this type, and why people have that situation. But to throw up your hands in defeat and say, What can we do if I'm, we're giving an answer? So you take a chemical, and you don't fraternize, and you don't commit the Averis, and this schorcha harbim ma'oid, you'll be from the gedolei oilam, controlling yourself, David. What's so hard to understand? Why are you watering this down? Why are you making the sonnets of this for the film community? I said publicly on radio, in, on Alan Cope's program, I was debating this, there for the grace of God, he could have made me want underage girls, underage boys, he could have done everything. So I'm not making light of it. What I'm saying is practically, the from a year, you go, if you have to, you have these tightness, instead of indulging yourself, take the salt, Peter. So that's what I want. Okay, so can I ask you, Rabbi Mizzle, let me ask you a question. It's an interesting debate. Would you say that somebody who has a big time of Lashon Hara should have his tongue can't cut out? So we did go through some of this last. We did go through some of this last week, and um, I mean this is very very stussy. You understand what he's doing? He does an exaggeration. Your tongue cut out. You this. You that. What's the purpose? What's the seichel? What's the intellect behind what 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 Lichtenstein is doing, other than to 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 cast a kalkai to krius and litzonis on the attitude towards kedushim to you? They think our Oyvah got this tour and they, it was a whole article. I think that it's it's a chiddish because then we would start cutting the hands off of people who are multiple ganada who get shlishi. Besides not giving them shlishi, we should cut their hands off. We should cut the tongues off of Ali Lashahara. We should cut the feet off and the fingers off of boys who access pornography. I'm uh, just pointing out that it's. Rabbi let me ask you, let me go to a different point. If somebody is gay and they can't hold the high, he says, look, I just can't. And he and he has a relationship with another guy, right? Oh, now, now the rubber is hitting the, the, the passport. Right. Point. So my question to you is, you have a shul of Akshay Hashem. He doesn't tell anybody. He's not a gay advocate. He's not marching. He's not going into gay day parade. He's not voting. He's, he's quietly, he's next show in this oven. He's, he's, he 
can't be like Jason, a topic, etc. Would you would you let him dive in your show? I'll answer. I'll tell you. I'll answer you. I'm not sure if you have your own opinion or not. But let me let me turn the tables and ask you the following question: If you know that there's a guy in your shul, you're the rough, and you know that he is cuckolding his friend and he's having an erva dika arayas dika smush with an ashes ish, can you tell me what you'll do? Okay, so I would tell you. According to uh, the Shulchan Aruch, he's a lad. That's, that's the simple answer. When I feel good about it, I think that when somebody is hurting somebody else, it's been other lechaveray. It's not necessarily in, in our place to be moichel for the other person. When something has been other lechavim, it's a different position. So if you ask me lahalacha what it is, I would say he's a lado. But if you would say what I feel different, I would feel different about somebody who's hurting somebody been other lechaveray. If I knew I had a guy who was beating up kids, his wife and kids, I'd have an issue with it. Somebody's doing been other little bucket. There's a bunch of shell about the world. You know what I mean? He just he he there's a die, there's an eight, there's a there's a din, and there's a dying. Do you understand the innate ignorance and the amaratus of what Mr. Lichtenstein is now saying? He's saying as follows. He's deciding that Mishkav Zacha is purely ben Adam Lamakam. It's like a chaik. There's no damage being done. I, David Lichtenstein, homosexual activity and Kaisu Ksubal Zacha, it's it's two, two consenting adults. They're above the age of consent. So how come the Chazal said maybe Mabel Le'olam that the world was destroyed by May Mabel of Nayach? It's it's, it's only Ben Adam Le'olam. Oh, it's not wiping. In other words, according to David Lichtenstein, the reason for the destruction of the world by Mabel should have been that a few people were beating their wives because beating their wives is much worse than homosexuality and homosexual marriage and everything and homosexual activity. That's what it comes out. So why did the Chazal only tell us because of homosexual activity, which has only been under the mark of a Mabel, they should have said because of wife beating. You understand the amaratus, the stupidity? And he's, he's, he's misleading a whole bunch of Tamimim, of B'nai Toim in Lakewood, who think that this guy is normal, that what he's saying should be reckoned with, and we should speak to him with respect, we should send him letters, Reb David, this, that, like we're clearing with him. You understand what's going on here? Shame on it. Here's, here's my answer. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Here's my answer. If I know that the guy is having an adulterous relationship with somebody else's Jewish wife, then, then I feel that if I know it, it's already not the Bosh of And if I know it, and he wants to come in and march in, it's a good, you speak about Tayyana, it could be that his feel is not Tayyana. I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of shy, but it's a hook of a tool, and by me accommodating him, I might have a problem. Rabbi Levy, let me ask you a question. Do you think among, uh, from the Jews, right, do you see that, you know, white collar crime is more prevalent than this issue? I, I would think so, right? Um, white collar crime, neighbors, et cetera, like this, right? But yet in, in shuls, they would give somebody with a white collar criminal, right? Yeah. They would give him shlishi or shishi, whatever the thing may be, whereas somebody who is uh, uh, gay and has an assignment, and if he's true, if he's truly gay, means he's a Tyson called him an oinus on some level, which means he has absolutely no option. He can't earn a living honest. He can't earn a living honestly and earn this honest and, no. and yet, you would say that I, I have a bigger problem with him than with the Ganif, with the Goblin, with the guy who's, who, who's constantly being the Chal Shem Shemayim. Do oh, you say anything wrong with that or no? The basis of the Odom Lechavero is tied in the Strictly in Beit Adam Lamaka. And what governs Beit Adam Lechaveri, right? get it? Get it? Yeah. I'm saying this, maybe I'm wrong, is Beit Adam Lamaka. And what's my raya? Yahatul Riafa is contextualized by the end of the Pasuk Ali Hashem. The only way to get to Hashem is to Beit Adam Lamaka, but it's just by Kabbalah Savicha and Shabbos. It's all within the context. We can become a Savicha if you don't do the Chal Shabbos or not. And I'll be other than welcome our sensitivities because the Gemara says somebody who's Merachim, when you should be not Merachim. Call on the Rachim. You're just pointing out. Call on the Rachim, Allah, Florim, Saifil Achser, Allah, Rachim, and that's the 
Khan is wrong, it's the habit of Kedoshim to you, this whole movement, and, 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 and if the Torah affects us and anything else, but even... We're not the, talking about the movements, we're talking about individuals, I'm not talking about movements, I'm talking about individuals, I'm talking about if you had in your show somebody you know who was, who was the sinner, he had a thing, right? We're not talking about movements, we're not talking about, uh, about earthquakes, or, I see that unfortunately, although we're coming to the end of the, of the Lichtenstein saga, there's still stuff that has to be discussed probably for another 10 minutes next week. But I want to conclude, do you understand the, 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 the foolishness of what he's saying? He's trying to parse, he's trying to bifurcate. We cannot take away and say we're going to deal in a, uh, a vacuum just this particular individual. This particular individual or this particular homosexual couple is part of a society that is increasingly being manifest and open and out and demanding things uh, to recognize them in spite of their avariant status. Okay? Now, and, and therefore we have to act accordingly. What I started to explain to Lichtenstein that he, he took out is that this is almost akin to a Shas Hashmad. This is a Sash HaShmat. In other words, when there's a Shmat time, even Arkas of the Masani, even red shoelaces, Yaharig Val Yavar. If there's a Gezeva that you have to wear red shoelaces for a ridiculous thing like that, and it's called a Havoy Dezora, whatever it is, it's a Shas HaShmat, you have to be Moisa Nefesh and allow yourself to be killed not to wear red shoelaces. Right now, everybody sees clearly that it's like a shmad to pushing this homosexuality in the final times of Ikvus of the Mashiach, the final gasp of Amalek. This is what's going on. If Lichtenstein can't understand this, the fact of the matter is, a big Talmud Chacham last night told me something that I wasn't aware of. That Arias in general, in Kedoshim Tiu, he pointed out that Arias in general, it says, Kichola Tayevas, whoever does like all these Tayevas. So you see, number one, all of Arias is called Tayeva. And then, particularly, Mishkov Zachar is called Tayeva. So that means that Mishkov Zachar is the nth degree of Tayeva. When Dovid asks, what do you mean? By Geneva it says Tayeva, and by Gaiva it says Tayeva. So this Talmud Chacham said, but nowhere does it say Tayeva, Sheba Tayeva, except by Mishkov Zachar. And he said it's also a Pesach in, 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 also in, a, in, in there's a Rashi in, in the end of Hazinu, that also refers in the word of Tegevus, that refers to it as Mishkav Zohar. So you see when in Hazina, when it just says the word Tegevus, it doesn't identify Rashi as Gaiva or Gineva, it's Davka Mishkav Zohar. In other words, the supreme Tegeva, David Lichtenstein, is Davka Mishkav Zohar, and this is also a Posik in a Malachi. So basically, basically, this is what we're talking about. I want to apologize that we didn't have time to uh, to get to, to the very end of the Lichtenstein thing. We're going to have to do it slightly in our next program. We didn't have time for the Devar Torah, but I ask you please spread the word, spread the word, spread the word about the video. You can see it on Rabbi Levin, uh, Rabbi Levin Radio on YouTube. It's archived.